Hi, I'm Jeff, and on this week's episode of the JarfCast, I'm crushing it! So I want to talk about functional models. This is what I love the most about 3D printing, being able to make things that improve my life. A lot of people love to make puzzles, torture tests, or novelty objects, and that's great. I'll do that too in between projects. Looking at you, Flexi Raptor. But here on the JarfCast, I want to focus on practical design and the techniques I use to achieve my making goals. So sometimes I'll find models online that I'm completely satisfied with no modifications like this dice tower. But more often than not, if I don't want to design an object from scratch, I'll find it online and it won't quite be to my specific needs or I just won't like something about it and I want to make some changes. This can crusher is one such example, and that's going to be the focus of today's video. Let's get started. Jerf. So recently I started drinking this canned fizzy water as a way to cut down on the number of calories I intake while I'm sitting in front of my computer. No sodium, no sugar, cool. And the bubbles, the fizzy, the carbonation helps keep me feel a little bit full. Keeps the snackies away. There was one problem, however, and that's that my trash can was overflowing with these dudes. If only I could find a way to make these cans a little bit smaller, maybe I wouldn't have to empty my trash so often. Enter the Can Crusher by the Fisher One, available down in the description, as are the Flexi Raptors by Cave Dog. So I was poking around Thingiverse, looking for a can crusher, and this was the favorite of mine. I just like the aesthetic the best, I guess. These big, gnarly, gears on the handle I find to be particularly great. Now, it does require the use of a couple of these 508 bearings, or I'm sure you could use print some bushings if you didn't want to use bearings. Uh, I found these at my local hardware store. Well, actually, I got these at the local hardware store. Stupid things ran me like 20 bucks for the set. Later, I found I could get a 10 pack of these on Amazon for half of that. Oh well, live and learn. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the model and consider how this is going to print. Okay, so I can print it at this free floating angle like this, which only means I kind of have to support the handle here. Or I could lay it down on its side and print supports in between it like this. I'm not terribly fond of either of these. In fact, I think I'd rather cut it in two and use some additional parts to hold it together. As I showed in my big old July roundup video, which by the way, you can check out here in case you missed it, I can use a dowel to hold my 3D printed parts together. All I need is to insert a hole where I want the parts to be held. I think I'll use Tinkercad. Tinkercad is a great way to make simple modifications to STL files. STL files being the files that you feed into your slicer that generate your 3D printing file. Now, the Fisher one was kind enough to include the SCAD files, which we'll modify a bit later. But for the changes I want to make to this handle, it would be much easier to just use Tinkercad. So here we have the part in CAD, and the first thing I want to do is cut it in half. For that, I'm going to put this on its side and measure the height. Then I'm going to make this rectangular prism with half of the height. Now turn that into a hole. Okay, so I wanna make sure that the length and width here are sufficient to completely remove half of this handle. I don't want any bits sticking out and not getting taken away by this. So, okay, now I'll combine the hole with the handle and I'm left with just half of the handle. All right, let's put this back down on its side and make a hole for the dowel. Now, I know that the dowel is about a half an inch in diameter but I need that dimension in millimeters. So rather than do math, I'm just gonna grab my handy dandy calipers and measure. Gotta turn it on first. All right, so that's about 12 and a half. And because I want this to actually fit inside the hole, we're gonna round it up to an even 13. Now finally, I'm gonna make a slot down the side here to allow for some flex if the print is slightly too small to fit around the dowel. So I've already got my dowel cut to size, but if you're making a long at home, what you want to make sure is that you cut a piece of dowel roughly twice the depth of the hole that you put into the handle. For that, I used a jigsaw, but you might find another tool to be a little easier to use. That's just all I had laying around. 
I recommend a chop saw or something like that, but you know, whatever's handy. Then I took a power sander to the edges to give it some nice round, easy to slide into a hole, not splintery edges. That fits great. All right, so after printing my first try, I realized that once you remove the support material here, it leaves behind this really nasty finish on the surface. It's stringy, get rid of that. That's why I needed more room in my trash can so I've got somewhere to throw away my support material. So I contacted the Fisher One and asked about what's with the extra thickness here. And they said, well, it's to add some extra support, some extra structural rigidity so that when you're crushing cans, it doesn't break. And that's great, except that's not where it breaks. This is where it breaks. This little nubbin that fits into the ball bearing, in my experience at least. All I'm doing is wasting plastic printing this extra thickness and printing all that support material, which leaves behind a finish that leaves something to be desired. I decided to flatten it out into that, and to do that, I went back to Tinkercad. So I'm gonna do this much the same as when I cut the handle in half. Grab a cube here and squash it down until the top is aligned with this surface. If I accidentally cut a fraction of a millimeter too much, no big deal. Now I'll turn this into a hole and combine it with the handle half. Voila! Now the handle will print flat against the print bed. No wasted plastic in this process. All right, and finally, I had to go into the SCAD files. So, first I had to locate the variables which control the height of this object and increase those values. I also needed to accommodate for the increased height of the teeth and any other values which control the placement of the teeth within this track. All right, once I have this accomplished, I can export the model. All right, so now that I have my increased height, I need to add some screw holes. I want mine to be countersunk. Back to Tinkercad one last time. Before I get there though, I'm gonna measure the outer diameter of these screw threads and the diameter of the head of the screw. I'm also gonna measure the thickness of the screw's head so that I make sure that I countersink it enough into the back plate that it's not going to interfere with the motion of the crushing block the dimension of the outer diameter of the screw head to the outer diameter of the screw thread aren't close enough together to really cause any problems. By that I mean I'm not worried about dropping the screw into the hole and having the hole so big for the threads that the whole screw passes right through it. Okay, so some final thoughts on this design. The pegs which hold the handles into the crushing block are weak. They are a constant point of failure in my experience, uh, especially in the wall-mounted version. They're way too weak to use PLA. This is basically garbage now. The latest handles that I've made, I've printed with PETG, and so far they've held up. We'll see how that goes. If these fail too, I'll give it a try in ABS before I just drill through this and the crushing block and just shove a big metal rod in there to hold it together. This base tended to be a little too weak for PLA. Now, PETG I've had no problems with, although ABS, strangely enough, did break as well. And what happens is when this is wall mounted, you got all of this force pressing down on this part here, and literally the bottom just falls out. Luckily for me, when the handles do break, I've got my clamp here, which I can fit over the crusher very nicely. And that really gives me a nice pancaked soda can, or in my case, fizzy water can. So I hope you've enjoyed this case study on this can crusher. Now I can get back to enjoying my fizzy, fizzy water. Mmm. Ah. I'll see you next time on the Jarfcast. Jarf! Jarf! Jarf!